Continuing on the news purge, we get to a little history mystery where, amazingly, 271 Picassos have turned up in France. The revelation of these previously unknown works believed to be by famed painter Pablo Picasso has set off a legal battle. Retired French electrician Pierre Leganex says he worked for Picasso at three of his properties and that the artists gave him the works. At 71, Leganex decided he was getting on in years and contacted the administrators of Picasso's estate. They authenticated 271 works valuing them at 79 million dollars. Soon after, Picasso's son Claude sued Leganek, alleging illegal receipt of the works. A lawyer for Picasso says it was a shocking moment to discover the unknown and unlisted Picasso creations, but he says it's impossible that Picasso could have made such a gift. When uh, Picasso uh, 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 made uh, just a little drawing, a metro ticket, he collected it. He was, he bought his own works at the end of, of, of his life. The works come from Picasso's most creative period. Claude Picasso says his father always dedicated, dated, and signed his gifts, knowing that some might try to sell them. Leganek told the AP that he and his wife did nothing wrong. A French agency in charge of battling the illegal traffic of cultural items is holding the works, which were seized from the Leganek home last month. Matt Friedman, the Associated Press. A retired French electrician and his wife came forward with 271 undocumented, never-before-seen works by Pablo Picasso, estimated to be worth at least $80 million. I think I've told you folks I subscribe with RSS feeds, and that's how I get most of my news, through a feed reader. And then I bookmark and put things in the context that they need to be. I subscribe to some of the news of the weird you'll find amazing things there. Yes, there's a lot of tabloid, silly garbage, but it's also the kind of interesting things that have a lot of the occult symbolism or a lot of the other bizarre media memes that go on. So I, for other fellow news hounds out there, I do recommend subscribing to some of the News of the Weird feeds. But we'll hop across the pond for yet more not very shocking revelations from the Daily Mail. Fresh scandal for Swedish royal family after Nazi past of Queen's father is revealed on a TV documentary. Sweden's royal family, recovering from revelations of the secret affair the king enjoyed with a pop singer, has been thrown into fresh turmoil over the Nazi past of the Queen's father. Swedish TV4's investigative program Kala Fakta has broadcast the first of a two-part documentary detailing how Queen Sylvia's late father grew rich producing armaments in a factory stolen from the Jews. When she married in 1976, the Queen's German father, Walter Sommerlath, denied he had ever been a member of the Nazi party. That fiction was exposed some years later by a Swedish newspaper, which proved he joined the movement in 1934. Earlier this year, Queen Silva spoke for the first time about it in a TV documentary in which she said he was not politically active and that the factory he ran produced toy trains and hair dryers, as well as parts for gas masks for civilians. She said she did not take the factory over from Jewish owners. Now, the revelations from Summerlath, who was living in Brazil at the time he joined the Nazis and only returned to Germany on the eve of the war, have plunged the royals into a new crisis. Swedish investigative journalist Bossy Sean says, quote, The truth about Queen Sylvia's father, which she doesn't want to tell herself or her family, is that he joined Hitler's Nazi party beginning on December 1st, 1934. Also, Queen Sylvia's father worked during his time in Brazil for the German company Akos Berderus do Brasil LTD, which used wartime prisoners as slave labor in Nazi Germany. More documentation of our supposed elites, our self-styled leaders with their inbred families, and their war criminal connections. And our last history mystery note is a bizarre one, but of course these things always swirl around the anniversary. Lee Harvey Oswald's coffin's up for sale. A gruesome piece of history is hitting the auction block today. A funeral director in Fort Worth is auctioning off Lee Harvey Oswald's first coffin. 
Oswald, the man who shot and killed President John F. Kennedy in 1963, was buried in the coffin for 18 years. But in 1981, it was dug up as part of an effort to put conspiracy theories to rest that he was not really buried there. Bidding will start at $1,000, and the auction also includes Oswald's death certificate, an Easter card he sent to his brother, and a second of the car seat on which President Kennedy was sitting when he was killed. What she meant to say was a section of the car seat on which Kennedy was sitting when he was killed, and any any of those angles you could take and do a whole line of of investigation and research about the car, and of course it got shipped off to Ford to get rebuilt, and they of course covered up the bullet holes in the windshield. And of course these things swirl around the anniversaries just coincidentally. Finally here on this 12-2 news purge, watch us explode. We get to the media and the memes, which contain so many other things. A little murder and mayhem and police state action. Actor Mark Ruffalo added to terrorism watch list over the film Gasland. Actor Mark Ruffalo, who you may know from one of my favorites, Eternal Sunshine and the Spotless Mind, has been reportedly placed on a U.S. terror advisory list after campaigning in support of a documentary highlighting the alleged dangers of natural gas drilling. Ruffalo attracted the attention of Pennsylvania's Office of Homeland Security when he organized screenings for the film Gas Land, which won the special jury prize at this year's Sundance Film Festival, and said he was concerned about the impact of drilling on water supplies. The actor has addressed the subject in the latest edition of the American magazine GQ. Gasland, directed by Josh Fox, follows the filmmaker as he visits communities in Pennsylvania where natural gas has been drilled. Fox decided to document his trip after a national natural gas company wrote to him in 2008, offering to lease his family's lands in Milanville, Pennsylvania for $100,000. The documentary attracted attention for a particular scene in which a local man shows that he's able to set his tap water on fire. And they show it. Others claim they're suffering from numerous health issues due, they believe, to their water having been contaminated. Gasland has been fiercely opposed by the natural gas industry, a pro-oil and gas organization, Energy In Depth, has published a list of claimed factual inaccuracies in the documentary. And I'll just remind you, and we went over it on the previous 196B episode here on MediaMonarchy.com about the contaminated water currently in D.C., and of course generally all around the country with arsenic and mercury and radioactive materials and pharmaceuticals almost makes fluoride seem like the least of the worries in response to all this mark ruffalo has written a piece on huffingtonpost.com when truth is scarier than fiction and he includes his twitter address at the bottom and I started to follow him there mruff221 so the last thing we'll note and it's important to note that Mark Ruffalo is also a 9-11 truther so if they were questioning with the amazing Pennsylvania police state activities that of course we reported to you several months ago with the involvement of Israeli corporations spying on American citizens if they weren't sure with Ruffalo's connection to Gasland, I'm sure his 9-11 skepticism pretty much put the last nail in that coffin. A million library books to be sent down the mines. This is one literally down the memory hole.